The coordinating chairman for PAP Town Council, Steo Ho Pin, is urging more cooperation to keep HDB common areas free of clutter and potential fire hazards. This follows recent fires involving items left at lift landings. Last year, the second highest number of residential fires also involved discarded items. This is what remains of the fire that took place on Sunday night. Residents on the 8th floor of Block 52 to Apayo Lorong 6 are left to clean up the suit that remains. It's the second fire in a week, after the one at Masiling last Friday, which also involved discarded items that lift landings. Over there, I put uh, my plate and then my what, rice cooker. Thing, you know, like, for the kitchen one and then the, all my dress or what, uh, oh, everything I put there. 61-year-old Madam Saripa says there's just not enough space in her house. The town council had also issued her a $50 fine a few days before the fire and had asked her to remove her things. Here stay 8%, 8 and then the thing you see, so many. And then if I put my thing there, where I want to sleep, where the children want to learn, want to study, where? You know what, that's what I put there. Neighbors say they had not complained about the clutter before the fire. The authorities say there has not been a noticeable increase in the number of complaints from residents, but it hoped more will play their part in ensuring the area is tidy. This is an ongoing uh, housekeeping habit. No, if you flush off the corridors once, tomorrow you know, some residents may cut up the corridors again. So I think you need cooperation from the residents. At the same time, you also need constant watch by the neighbours to actually keep the town councils informed of such obstructions so that the town councils can react now fast enough to remove such bulky items. Mr Teo says town councils will reach out to residents through posters, flyers and online. More children in Singapore are now suffering from type 2 diabetes. That refers to diabetes that's not genetic but acquired through, for instance, an unhealthy lifestyle. The Health Promotion Board says they now account for up to 33% of childhood diabetes cases, up from 10% a decade ago. So the board has launched a program called Cherish Junior to get kids in preschool to adopt healthier habits. Eating fruits and vegetables may be part of a healthy diet, but what's equally important is food proportioning. Under the program, nutritionists will teach cooks from childcare centres to prepare meals to meet the child's daily intake of the four food groups. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Teachers will also introduce interactive lesson plans for children to learn health-related topics. And some of these children will take on the teacher role themselves. Part of the health framework involves these preschool ambassadors. They've been selected and trained by the teachers to champion health-promoting habits such as eating healthy and physical activity. I asked my friend to finish the fruit and vegetable. When my friends are angry, I will stay cool and happy. So far, 91 of more than 1,400 preschools in Singapore have applied to be certified at Cherish Junior Preschool. There are hopes the program will result in a drop in the number of children with diabetes. About 8% of our preschoolers, in fact, are overweight. I'm concerned about this because uh, overweight will predispose our children to type 2 diabetes. In the past, it used to be type 1, which is uh, genetic. But now type 2 is starting to appear, some as young as 8 years old. HPB aims to roll out the program to 140 preschools by the end of the year and expand this to 420 schools by 2015. Meanwhile, the Health Ministry is expanding its weekly spot checks for a hand, foot, foot and mouth disease. It will add to the list of private enrichment centres such as tuition centres and language schools. Right now, only childcare centres and kindergartens are inspected. But the Ministry says it's increased the frequency of inspections and is working with the Education Ministry to ensure high standards of hygiene in primary schools. It's also urging schools and parents to get children to wash their hands regularly and not share eating utensils. In world news, renewed uncertainty in the Eurozone after voters in France and Greece handed their ruling party's defeat overnight. It's an apparent rejection of austerity measures which were adopted to slash public debt. 
Germany has ruled out any renegotiation of hard-won agreements to fight the debt crisis. But Chancellor Angela Merkel played down fears of Franco-German ties turning sour after French President-elect François Hollande vowed to rework the EU's fiscal pact on cutting deficits. The two leaders are expected to hold talks soon in Berlin after Mr Hollande formally assumes the presidency on May 15th. He won 52% of the vote to deny Nicolas Sarkozy a second term. France has voted for change. It's the first time in a generation that a Socialist Party candidate is elected president. François Hollande has never held public office, but many voters were drawn to his message of social justice, including his proposal to tax the rich by up to 75% and boost spending by 20 billion euros. The 57-year-old says it's time for France and Europe to focus on growth instead of austerity. Au-delà des chefs de gouvernement et des chefs d'État, il y a des peuples qui, grâce à nous, espèrent, regardent vers nous et veulent en terminer avec l'austérité. Je porte toute la responsabilité de cette défaite. Je vais vous dire pourquoi. Je me suis battu sur la valeur de responsabilité et je ne suis pas un homme qui n'assume pas ses responsabilités. We have a huge international and European program, uh, starting by uh, a visit in Berlin uh, to Madame Merkel. She invited the new president to come and visit her. Mr. Hollande says he wants to renegotiate a Eurozone debt deal seen as a cornerstone of the region's stability. We have already spoken to Merkel Hollande. However, it is not filled with content. It might be a little lower than Bayern Hollande, because he is just not a so lebhafter, sprunghafter Politiker ist, wie wir das von Sarkozy gewohnt sind. A silver lining for Mr. Hollande is that his party is poised to win a majority in parliamentary elections next month, giving the socialists more power than ever before.